creatively united premiered Sea Blind, Sarah Robertson's policy changing feature film in 2016. We asked Sarah how she got into filmmaking. I started going to the Arctic as a 20 year old. Uh, all I had was an engineered underwater camera and uh, I slipped underneath the Arctic ice. I'd always wanted to do that, uh, to see underneath the ice sheet what was there. And I saw the seals, the harp seals, narwhals, belugas, and was smitten. And after that, I knew that I wanted to spend my life telling stories about the Arctic ice. And I've been doing it now for almost 30 years. So there's not many places, uh, geographical areas in the world, where you can see so much change within such a short period of time. Oh man, this is what the Arctic's all about, mostly weather. Arctic Tale really was a film from the animal's point of view, from the bears and the walruses' point of view, um, and what it was like for them to experience climate change. But we wanted to show what their uh, reactions were and their adaptations were as they were going through seven years of their lifespan. It was made for kids and was really one of the first films to be put out for families to talk about climate change. If your mom and dad buy a hybrid car, you'll make it easier for polar bears to get around. It was actually a very serious film, even though it used animals to tell the story. Uh, the, I used the animals as metaphors, metaphors for us. Um, and what the animals were going through, of course, is what we would have to learn to go through as well. And it was a really great film um, made in Hollywood for families and got a great distribution. And then uh, just recently I made Sea Blind, a completely different film about the global political situation in the Arctic. Because the ice is melting, now the Arctic is open to a lot of exploitation from resources and from shipping. The movie Sea Blind is about how the northern hemispheric shipping might be rerouted through the Arctic and what the consequences to that are. Sea Blind is really about the price of shipping our stuff. stuff here. I'll put some stuff over there. You put your stuff over there. I'm putting my stuff over here. Here's another place for stuff. Hey, we got more places than we've got stuff. We're going to have to buy more stuff. And what we get out in the film is about pollution and emissions um, and how much emissions is actually um, put into the atmosphere because of shipping. Global shipping is using, I'm, I think, somewhere uh, over 400 million tons of fuel. That's quite a lot. One of the biggest statistics that jumped out at me as I was researching the subject for this uh, new film was a piece I read in The Guardian, which stated that 17 of the largest ships emitted more sulfur pollution than all the cars on the planet. It's a s magnificent uh, thing to think about, and it really propelled me to look deeper into the shipping emission problem that exists in the world, which actually very few people knew anything about. Because it's so high in contaminant, when it's combusted, it emits a whole range of toxic and deadly contaminants to the air. And one of the ones we're most concerned about is black carbon. Black carbon is really dangerous in terms of climate because it sucks up sunlight and then converts that sunlight to heat, to heat the air directly. But it also deposits on snow and sea ice and melts it faster. So the problem with that is once you've emitted it, it's gonna stay there and have impacts for a long time. Yeah, shipping really is a secretive industry hidden away from us um, and very unregulated as it turns out. Um, and the second most compelling piece of research that I understood is that marine black carbon, the black ash that is uh, distributed after the ships go by, is actually the second leading cause of global warming after CO2. Ships emit enormous amounts of, of black carbon on ice, turning the, the white ice black. And this is a huge issue if we're going to have increased shipping through the Arctic. Just one of the largest ships burns 380 tons of fuel a day. Black carbon is about a million times more powerful per unit mass at warming the air than carbon dioxide. It took a concerted effort over basically 20 years to develop the algorithms necessary to study the impacts of black carbon properly. So one of the things I discovered in 2000 was that black carbon is the second leading cause of global warming after carbon dioxide. 
when the ice is turning black, it loses its reflectivity. Um, and so it, it can't reflect heat back up into the atmosphere. In instead, it absorbs the heat and melts uh, the ice sheets much quicker. The problem is there is a continuous source of black carbon. It's being emitted in the atmosphere all the time. Shipping must do its part to stop emitting black carbon. And there is a way. It doesn't have to burn the dirtiest fuel on the planet. But so far, solving the black carbon effects of shipping emissions has gained little traction. What has attracted media attention is the human health problems caused by shipping. that come out of a ship's smokestack don't just stay out there in the ocean. The wind blows them on shore, and then it becomes part of the mix of pollutants that we breathe here on land, even if we're hundreds of kilometers inland. This air pollution causes about 50,000 premature deaths in Europe. That's a total cost, together with diseases, of 72 billion US dollars a year alone in Europe. And we can see that regulation Reducing these costs will be very cost efficient. It will be much cheaper to avoid the pollution than to live with the health costs. But the shipping industry does not pay for the healthcare costs of its pollution. We do. The shipping industry burns the cheapest, dirtiest fuel on the planet. In movie making, uh, we're really informing and teaching people about very complicated issues and ideas really through a visual storytelling medium. Um, and I've been able to do that with all my films, I think mostly because the Arctic is really such a compelling place. Um, it looks fantastic visually, the landscape is so mysterious. So Sea Blind was a really interesting piece uh, that I was able to introduce into politics. I showed it at the Paris conference, climate conference, and learned at the Paris conference that hardly anyone knew about the black carbon issue, even at a very high political level. And then we were able to present the film in various European uh, parliaments and get MPs and politicians to listen to it um, and to really affect change within their separate countries about um, how to regulate sulfur and black carbon. And in fact, many, many countries are saying we should not be able to burn the heavy fuel oil in the Arctic through any kind of shipping there. This viscous residual gunk that really is the bottom of the barrel of all possible fuels. This stuff should not be burnt. This stuff is revolting. Asked, it should not be burnt. We can do better than that. So this is something that's just been uh, considered by the global international marine community um, and there's tremendous pressure around the world to make it happen. It's already happening in the Antarctic. They're, they're not allowed to burn this type of fuel in the Antarctic, so it's something that's been done before. We see how to do it and we need to do it in the Arctic right away. We got 60 uh, CEOs from the Netherlands um, onto a ship in Svalbard in northern Norway and we were able to take them out onto the ice to see the melting glaciers in Norway. And afterwards, we sat them down and made them do workshops, uh, working with each other with five different sectors of CEOs, energy, transportation, you know, all working together and figuring out how they're going to meet the two degree challenge uh, that in fact all industries and all people are obligated to make. How are we going to basically cut our emissions by 50%? Uh, to, meet, to meet the two degree challenge and that was an extraordinary event because you had some of the high, highest powered companies all working together and we live streamed directly to, uh, to uh, broadcast so they were able to speak about it publicly. It's very unusual, we wouldn't do that here in North America. 